Hi everyone, this is a, a demo that's going to show you how to create art within Datagraph. And in particular, I think this is a really, I just think this is a really cool project. This is called MathCat, and uh, the MathCat is drawn by using each one of these functions that you see here on the right hand side. And every function draws an individual line segment within the cat itself. And we're gonna do this using the function command within Datagraph and show you how you can draw the cat as well as create the legend that you see on the right hand side. What I'd like to do first is to do a quick demo of the function command itself so you can see how that works. I'll do this in a new file and I'm going to switch the location of my uh, d commands and my data because I really don't need the data for this. So if I click this little icon here, then notice now my commands are on the left hand side. I'm going to double click on the top of the toolbar here to expand the file and I can make my drawing canvas take up the entire right hand side of my screen to give me a little bit more uh, space to view that. Uh, also I just I don't need this built-in plot command so I can delete that. First to add a function command there's a function shortcut up in the toolbar. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. That adds my command. And you can see how this gives me a place that I can just type directly in the function that I want to draw. Here I'm going to type in x squared. And you see now how that function is drawn. By default, the range that the function is drawn is given from 0 to 1. But I can change this to whatever I want. Uh, first, let me type in a different function. We have a lot of things that are built in. For example, I can just do sine of x. And if I want to make that range bigger, I'll go ahead and type sine of x out to 100. And actually make this line width thick again. And another kind of fun function here, sine of x divided by x, gives us kind of an interesting looking function. And I can make this range go negative as well. So from negative 100 to 100. Now another thing that we're going to use in this demo is the color picker with the eyedropper. So if you go under where the color tile is located and down to the bottom, there's the color picker. And this gives you a, a bunch of different ways that you can specify colors using Apple's built-in color picker. But what I want to do again is use this eyedropper, which allows me to go anywhere within my screen. And if there's a color that I like, I can click on that. And notice that that changed my color of my function to the same color um, that was specified here with my color picker. Finally, we're also going to specify the legend that goes along with these functions. And if I am satisfied with the way that the function is written right here, and I just click on this legend command uh, in the toolbar, it goes ahead and adds the legend, and it's using I open up this detail view, the legend name as it's specified with this command. Again, this is set to the same function that I've specified. It's using a token that is linked to whatever I type here. So if I change this back, for example, to sign of x, then it changes the legend name also. And I can customize this further, and I'll, I'll show you how you can do that when, as we uh, do the demo. Now what you see here on the right hand side of your screen is the original project that this demo was based on. And this project was completed by Bridget Buchanan, who's a 10th grader at Carborough High School in North Carolina. And I, I just think this is really such a cool thing that she did. She was the one who actually came up with all of these functions to draw this cat. And, uh, and again, I took a screenshot of her project and just pasted it here into Datagraph so I could have a copy of it handy to refer back to. And this is also a list of all of the functions that she came up with in order to draw this math cat. And again, I have two screenshots here that show each of these functions in the original form that she came up with them. And she shows the function here along with the domain that that function needs to be drawn over. And we're going to um, use both these functions, but also use that color picker in order to try and stay faithful to the original colors that are in the drawing that she came up with here. We'll do this in a new image, new graph window. And I'm going to put the commands on the left hand side to give me more room to work. I also have exported a copy of the function list 
so that I can look at these while I'm adding them in. We just added a function command and we'll go ahead and add the first one which is simply y is equal to zero. The range on the function command is used to set the domains. And for each of these, I want to actually have the same colors that were in the original project. So I'm going to use the color picker to select the color off of the actual image of the legend. And I just made the, the width of the line a little bit thicker so it would be easier to see. Okay, so now the next command we added by doing uh, cloning the first command and we go ahead and add that function, add the range, showing this to you in a little bit of speeded up time, make this go a little bit faster, but you can kind of see the process by which each of these are created. And notice now that the aspect ratio was a little bit off or is a little bit off. In order to fix that, I can use the axis setting and click pad to make X and Y scales equal. Now the image will keep, keep the appropriate shape as we change the size of it. For the next function, this was using a, a log that was in a base of x minus 5. In order to do that, I just wanted to point this out because we don't have a function that does that, but we slightly rearrange the equation in order to essentially do the same calculation. And if you're interested in how that equation is derived, it's shown below. Now our cat is really starting to come together. I've got a number of functions here and you can see the outline starting to connect. The next one we're going to add here is actually going to need to be a lines command because we're down to the point where we have a function that is x equal to seven. Uh, the function command itself won't do that because it's posed in terms of y is equal to some function, but we can do this easily with the lines command. And within the lines command, you can specify the extent of the line and we'll add the lower and upper value um, as given in the legend. Okay, now we're really getting things almost finished here. We're going to add these two functions that define the ears of the cat. This has an absolute value function in it, which is uh, the absolute value is a function built into data graph. So now we have one ear. We can go ahead and uh, just always refer back to our original image, change the color, and we'll hold the option key down while we dragged that to clone it. And again, going ahead and setting the function and the range. in the color. So our cat now is complete. I added this last line segment and just wanted to point this out because this equation was actually is posed in terms of x is equal to a, an expression in terms of y. I rearranged that expression to be an expression in terms of x, but because of that we end up actually with two equations because it's a plus or minus expression. And um, I had to set the ending range for that equal to 13.4 because the expressions contain x minus 13.4. So basically these equations are not well defined when it's equal to 13.4. So you, you want to pin it right to that value and not go above 13.4. So now that our cat is basically complete, I just wanted to point out that I preferred to turn off the axes and just show the cat itself by unchecking the draw x and y numbers. And we can go ahead and set the size of the graph that we'd like to see when we export. Also change the line size with the pen setting. And I also want to add a legend. So just clicking on the legend command goes ahead and adds a legend into our figure where each of the functions that we see are now shown in the legend along with the associated color. I'm going to just move the legend command up to the top. And one of the things that the legend does here is it's interpreting the mathematical equation as text. And Datagraph uses a similar uh, type of equation editor as LaTeX, if you're familiar with that. So for things that are in superscript, we have to put them the entire superscript in curly braces. 
for it to be formatted correctly. Gone ahead and formatted all of those superscripts correctly, and now I want the rest of the legend to look similar to the example that I started with, where the function is shown as a y equal to some equation, and then we also want to show the domain. Now notice the curly braces to actually show up as curly braces have to have a backslash in front of them. And if you forget how to type that, you can go into the menu here and look at special characters. And, and if you select one of those, it will format them correctly for you. Also, we want to have the um, less than or equal to symbol here, which we can um, type in using the command as it's shown. And then we go ahead and we match those appropriate items in the legend. So here we have our final project. We have our MathCat with all our functions on the right-hand side and the domain listed as you can see here. I just wanted to point out that a couple of these functions at the end in particular, I had to type in the equation uh, to appropriately format it in the legend. And for example, this last function that we had there's actually two commands that were used to draw this one because it's a plus and minus of the same function. And I didn't want that to be listed twice in my legend. So you can also just leave the legend name blank. And then when you do that, it does not show up in the list itself. I also wanted to point out that the legend entries, we had to customize the width of the distance between the legend entries. This is what they look like if you use the default settings for the legend. If we go back to the final version and go ahead and look into the legend command itself, there's a section here where you can specify the legend size and specifically this uh, spacing. We can set to exactly what we would like. There's a slider that you can use to change this or you can just type the value in exactly as you would like to see the distance between each of those items. Thank you so much again to Bridget Buchanan for letting us use her project as a basis for this demo. If you are interested in getting a copy of this file, it's available on our blog. And if you have any questions, you can contact us at help at visualdatatools.com.